In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how to get more help from the Visual Basic Editor. We don't need any particular files for this session, so let's just start with a brand new blank workbook. We can then head to the Visual Basic Editor, insert a module into the project, and we'll begin a new subroutine called Getting Help. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to find some more help on the border around method that we encountered a couple of lessons ago. Let's start by referring to the active cell and then look for the border around method. And then we can type in a space to see the tooltip that describes the parameters that the border around method has. Now, although the parameters are listed out in the order that they exist and we can see what their names are, and we also get a little tiny indication of what types of things we can provide for some of those parameters, such as the weight parameter here, we're not given as much information as we could have. So what I'd like to do is look at how we can use a tool called the Object Browser, which is sort of the VB Editor's equivalent of a dictionary to help us to look up more help on this particular method. You can open the Object Browser either by pressing the F2 key on the keyboard or by heading up to the View menu and choosing Object Browser. When you choose either of those two options, the Object Browser opens up into the main area of the screen. The window is divided into two separate halves. So on the left hand side, we see what are referred to as classes. Classes are like blueprints for different types of objects in VBA. So you'll see things in here such as range and worksheet and chart, etc. On the right hand side, you see a list of members for the class that you currently have selected. So members are the methods and properties. You'll recognize little flying green brick symbols and the little pointy finger symbols indicating properties and methods. There are several other symbols you may well see in this list that we haven't encountered yet, but don't worry, we'll get onto those as we work further through the course. One way to use the object browser is to follow the same sequence of keywords as we've written in our code. So we've started our instruction using the active cell keyword. With the globals class selected, I can look for the active cell keyword in the list on the right hand side, and I can see that the active cell here is indicated as a property. Now, in an earlier part of the course, we explained that you usually apply a property to an object that you've referenced. In the globals class, although active cell is a property, you don't need to apply it to another object. You can use the active cell property at the beginning of a statement, hence global, and then apply subsequent methods and properties to it. So anything that appears in the globals class members list can be used to begin a statement. What we need to do is find out what type of object or what class of object the active cell property actually returns. And I can do that by clicking onto the active cell keyword and then looking down in the bottom of the window to find out what type of thing it does indeed return. So if I zoomed into that part of the screen, I can see that I've selected the active cell property and that returns a reference as a range. So what I can do now conveniently, conveniently is click on the range keyword and that will scroll down in the list of classes to find the range class. I could have done that myself manually, but it's convenient to use the, uh, the clickable links in the bottom part of the object browser window. Having selected the range keyword in the list of classes, the right hand side of the window will now show me all of its members, i.e. its methods and properties. The method that we applied to the active cell earlier on was border around, and I can find that in the list. And once again, I'm going to click on that to select it. Now I'll find that the bottom part of the window shows me essentially the same information that we can see in the tooltip that appears when you type the border around method into your code. What I want to do is get some more help beyond what is shown here. So to do that, what I'm going to do is right click on the border around keyword and then find the help option in the menu and select that. Now, what this will do is launch your default web browser and attempt to navigate to a page for the particular method or property or object or collection that you've just right clicked on. So in this case, of course, it's the border around method that's applying to a range object. Every single method, property, object, collection, and other type of keyword has its own dedicated help page like this on the Microsoft website. Although there's quite a lot of information here, the layout of these pages is fairly consistent. It always begins after, of course, telling you what method or property or, or type of thing you're looking at. It explains what that particular property or method does. There's then a little section that shows you the syntax of that keyword, so where it fits into a statement that you can write in VBA. 
When there are parameters, it will list out all the parameters and show you whether they're compulsory or optional, what their types are. And this often provides us with useful information, extra useful things we can click on. So for example, if I want to know what line styles are available, there's a preset list of these. If I click on the Excel line style link, that will take me to another page that shows me what the valid options are. Clicking the back button in my browser returns me to the original help page and scrolling down a little further will take me to a section called remarks. This is often the most useful part of the page because it explains things you should watch out for when using this particular keyword. So for example, if I zoom in on this section, you can see that two of the arguments or two of the parameters of this method are mutually exclusive. I can either specify a line style or a weight, but not both. A little further down the page, there's a little example, which you can happily just copy and paste into your own code and then make changes to, to get the results you want. Once I'm happy with the, the information I found, I can close down the browser to return to my VB editor. Then I'm gonna close down the object browser window to return to my module. So now that I've found out all the help about this border around method, I can continue writing the code with a little bit more confidence. So let's say I want to set the line style to an Excel dash. I've seen on the page that that's a valid option for that particular parameter. And then if I type in the color property, I'm gonna set that to be equal to RGB green. So color colon equals RGB green. If you think that using the object browser is a little bit long-winded for getting help, there is a slightly quicker way you can do it as well. Let's pick a new method. I'd like to apply the find method to the cells object. So if I type in cells.find. Now I know that the find method from previous experience has lots of parameters, and I'd like to know what these all mean. To launch the context sensitive help system, make sure that the text cursor is somewhere in contact with the word that I want to get help on, and then simply press the F1 key on the keyboard. When I do that, the default web browser will open and it will try to take me directly to the help page for the keyword that my cursor was in contact with. And again, it tells me that I'm looking at a find method that can be applied to a range object. It tells me what that method does. It shows me the syntax where the find method fits into an instruction. It lists out all of the parameters. It provides me with links that I can click on to see other related information. There's a remarks section to tell me what type of things to watch out for when using this particular method. And down at the bottom, I'll get some sample code, some quite complex sample code in this particular case that gives you some ideas as to where you can use this particular method. So having, written, having read all of this and of course completely understood it all immediately, we can close down the web browser, return to the code and then use that method with a little more confidence. Now the best way by far to become familiar with the help system in VBA is simply to use it as frequently as possible. So as we progress further through the course, try to make the time to use both the online help system by pressing F1 and the object browser. This is one of the really key skills to learn when using VBA. You'll thank yourself for doing it in the long run, even if it feels a bit tedious to start with.